video, I'm going to be showing you my new favorite nail art design of all time. And I say that so often, and it is every time it's something I mean wholeheartedly. And I really do love this one. It is covered in bumblebees. It has a pot of honey, one of the little um, honey grabber stick things. I'll probably need to learn the name of that. And then some honeycomb. The honeycomb is a lot easier to make than I was expecting it to be. I really love the way this one turned out. It has all those warm, drippy honey colors all over it, and it just looks like summer and sweetness. I hope you guys like it as much as I do, and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So we're going to begin with an overlay of a soft white acrylic. And I do want to say, I do know what the name of that is. It is a honey dipper. I don't know why my brain decided to just short out on me in the moment, but it did. And here we are. So that's a honey dipper. Woohoo. I figured it out. Yay. And so we're going to start with that overlay of that Mielke white acrylic going over the top of the whole thing that will really offset those rich honey colors and make them pop. After that nail's been filed, you can set it to the side, and now we're going to start sculpting all of our little elements that will be used to complete this design. To make the honey pot, I'm going to start by sculpting a just a circle around the end of a straw. So this is a plastic straw. A paper one will not work, unfortunately. I also wouldn't use a silicone one. You really wanted to just use the classic disposable style straw. Obviously, if you are making acrylic art with it, it is not disposable. It's not a one-use plastic in that circumstance. So as far as like the environmental impact of it goes I don't feel too bad about it because I use them over and over and over again I also want to mention if you are in a location that cannot get plastic straws you can also use something like a pen wrapped with a nail form backing but it's just an extra step so if you have straws at your disposal obviously use one of those otherwise there are some other alternatives so after you have that cylinder sculpted around the straw you're going to really build up the middle area of this so that it has a nice bulbous look to it and then it's going to taper down and sort of smooth down toward the bottom of the honeypot. And then you're going to leave it so that it kind of has a ridge right along the top of it, but create a little bit of a smoothness right along the top so it doesn't look unfinished because the very top of the jar is where there would be like the little screw on cap. So there does need to be a little bit of a narrow lip there. So just kind of sculpt around that and you'll figure it out. Any lumpiness or bumpiness that this may have, which obviously with all the sculpting and all this acrylic that we're using there, it won't be perfect. And don't expect it to be perfect either. So after you're done sculpting it and you let it set up so that it dries, I always tip my straw upside down so that I don't bump the acrylic and I stick it into a cup. Then you can pull that jar off the end of the straw. You may have to pinch the straw just a little bit to gently loosen it. Sometimes you have to loosen it from the bottom too with the tweezers. Usually they come off easier than this one did, but you just have to play around with it and then it'll slide right off. File the edges so that the top and the bottom are nice and smooth. After you filed both the top and the bottom, you may want to grab an e-file and file around the outside side of it. I'm going to use an under the nail cleaner bit to smooth out the shape of this little honey pot in general. So it's not perfect as I have advertised. So we're going to try to make it as smooth and as even as possible. I'm not going to use the word perfect because it's not, it's not going to be, we're, we're people. We, you know, we aren't perfect. That's how it goes. So if you're striving for perfect, you're always going to be disappointed. So strive for the best you can do, which is what we're doing here. We're just trying to make it smoother, a little bit less um, uneven. I had one side that was significantly thicker than the other. So I'm taking that back. I'm moving it so that, or adjusting it so that the shape looks similar from all angles. And that's the goal. So just keep turning it, keep looking at it. And as long as it starts to look smooth and even to you, you're done. Then take a circle of that same clear acrylic on a nail form backing, set your jar on top of it. That will create the bottom. And now we're going to sculpt our honey dipper on our nail form backing with a cream color acrylic. I'm going to be so excited about that for the rest of the day. So we've got a long stem of the honey dipper. So just sculpt that with a thin little bit of an off-white acrylic and then sculpt the end of the honey dipper and just make the basic shape of it. Don't worry about sculpting in the little ridges quite yet. Just leave it as a flat shape. Once that has been cured and you can pull it off the nail form backing, you're going to want to thick up, thicken up both the stem or the handle portion of the honey dipper and then the end of it. So I'm going to start with the handle and just make sure that that's nice and round. You don't want it to be too thick. It should look still dainty and narrow. And then we're going to add a second layer that's a little bit thicker to the end of the honey dipper. And then as that is setting, just make sure that it's thick enough before you do this. So I'm going to add actually another layer to it. But as that is setting, you're going to want to take the very tip of your brush and carve in the little grooves that are going to actually be the, the part that grabs the honey. So you're going to take the tip of your brush, just run it back and forth to grab those or to carve in those grooves. Do the same thing on the other side. And then with a brown color of acrylic, you're going to wash over the honey dipper to fill in those grooves and add some shading and definition. After that's been done and you've kind of washed over the whole thing wherever you've needed it, add a little circle of the brown acrylic on the very end of the honey dipper. Now we're going to make our honeycomb work quickly, very quickly. Make a thick pad of yellow acrylic using a dotting 
cutting tool dipped into some acrylic powder, yellow or clear, press that into your little yellow acrylic section. And this is going to create that honeycomb pattern. Eventually you're gonna find that your acrylic is going to start to get stiffer and harder to press into. Once that happens and you can no longer easily get that honeycomb pattern, take a craft knife dipped into acrylic powder and cut your honeycomb so that the areas that you were not able to texturize do not show. So do a little bit of a little haircut around this piece of honeycomb. And then as soon as you're happy with the size and the shape of it, it doesn't have to be perfect, set that to the side. Now we're going to make our little bees. So I'm going to start with a brighter shade or a deeper shade of yellow than I did for the honeycomb. That should be a pastel yellow. So you're gonna start out by sculpting their abdomens with little sort of upside down triangles. So sculpt as many of those as you want bees. And then you're going to add their thorax. And then you're going to finish by adding their head with black. So you've got these three different layers. And when you're adding their head, just press it down kind of in the middle of it to make it a little bit flatter so it's not quite as circular as say the thorax is. Once those are done, then you can sculpt little clear wings that are teardrop shapes to the side. Do not have the teardrop shaped wings touch your bumblebee yet. You want them to be separate. So you're going to do two sets or two wings per bee. So I like to sculpt them right next to the bees so that I can make sure that I kind of keep my count together. If you were just sculpting like a big row of them, you'd have to go back through and count to make sure that you had enough. This way, if you just go along and you do them right next to each other, then you can kind of keep a better eye on things. Then I'm going to start assembling everything and putting it together. I'm going to place my honey pot in one of the upper corners of the nails and attach it with some clear acrylic and then fill in underneath it with more clear acrylic to make sure it is not going anywhere. I'm going to next attach my honeycomb whenever I'm putting things together and I'm building the design I like to preset things out next to me so I know the order and how I like things positioned and I also like to attach them in order from biggest item to smallest item so that I make sure I don't run out of room because if you move a small item off just a little bit it could make it so that the big item does not fit so then the next I'm going to attach is the honey dipper and now with acrylic paint I'm going to be adding some details I'm going to be adding a label on my honey jar and one thing if you wanted to do and you wanted to make this a Winnie the Pooh set because this would definitely go with a Winnie the Pooh set is instead of writing honey like I did I used kind of a pretty cursive font and I spelled it properly if you wanted to make it a Winnie the Pooh instead of doing it the way I did and kind of like an elegant upscale honey jar label what you would do is you would simplify the label a little bit and then write h-u-n-n-y with one of the n's backwards and that would give you the winnie the pooh type of a styling if you are a winnie the pooh fan and you are planning on making this winnie the pooh-esque i have a couple winnie the pooh videos in the past that i will share with you in the description box below when my husband saw this design he was looking at it and looking at it and he goes where's pooh because I so frequently do a design that is a specific character or a specific brand. So he was certain that there was going to be Winnie the Pooh hidden in this design somewhere. And he was looking at it and looking at it. And finally, I'm like, no, <laughs> no Winnie the Pooh, just honey, just the honey. I'm going to wash over my honeycomb with some diluted brown paint so that it settles into the holes that I sculpted. If any of the holes did not get any of the paint when you just quickly washed over it, take a little brush and place some paint directly in those holes. You could do it that way from the start, but it's a little quicker to wash over it first and just pick up the ones that you need to later. On top of the label with black paint, I am going to be writing the word honey, like I said, with kind of like a hand lettering, swooping, sort of handwritten cursive style is is the idea. So I'm gonna start with the N since that's the middle letter in the word. Whenever you're doing any writing and you want something to be centered, count how many letters it is. For honey, it's five, H-O-N-E-Y. The middle letter is the N. And so that's the one you're going to start with in the center of the space that you have for the word. Then you can build off of it from either direction. I'm now going to paint the inside of my honey jar with a color from Adam Glam that is perfectly named Dipped in Honey. And I'm going to just spread that all along the inside of the jar. Do your best to fill in every single place. You don't want any holes or any places where there isn't that color. After you have completely filled that in, you might want to cure that or flash cure it so it doesn't run down. If you're not worried about that or you're working quickly, you don't have to flash cure it. But if after you get done with everything else and you look back at it, if it does seem like all of that gel inside the jar pooled in one spot you may want to fix it add that same dipped in honey color over the top of the honeycomb and then add little drips and little dabs of that color all over the design anywhere else you feel like you want to have it be sticky now i'm going to take some 
<laughs> some acro gel that I had way too much on my little spatula. So I had to scrape it off on the side, but we're going to fill in our honey jar with acro gel. The reason we're filling it in instead of trying to fill the whole thing in with our honey color is because that would take a lot of gel and it would end up looking way too dark. We don't want it to be that pigmented. So that little thin layer on the inside of the jar is perfect. And then you fill it in with clear. And then after you fill this in with acro gel, press it in with your brush. Again, we don't want any air gaps. So do your best to avoid those. Go ahead and cure that apply the dipped in honey over the top of the top of the acro gel and then a little bit of a dripping on the side of the jar no matter what kind of jar of honey i have whether it's a squeeze bottle or a glass jar whatever kind of thing it is it is always sticky all over cure that and now we're going to take some jewelry gel in little tiny dabs and we're going to start adding our bumblebees so we're going to take our bumblebee bodies and we're going to place them on at the moment they don't really look like much because they blend in with the nail there's so much yellow and gold tones on this already that you can't really see their little bodies and they don't have stripes or wings or any of those other things that will make them so obvious and cute and stand out so don't worry about it yet Right now, all we're trying to do is find the places for the bees. You want them to be facing different directions on different elements of the design, some of them directly on the nail, some on the honey pot, the honey dipper, the honeycomb, any drips of honey that are around. Just figure out where you want all of these little bumblebees, fill in any gaps in the, in the design that look like they need something, and then add them wherever it looks like it would be cute. If you have extra bumblebees, that's fine. Consider it a bonus. Then you have extra wings in case you drop some. Or if you don't have enough bumblebees, just grab your nail form backing and your acrylic back over by you and sculpt a few more. You don't really know how many you're going to need until you start assembling it. So I'm going to add one more right on that little honey label. And then after that one is placed on and flash cured, then you're going to put this whole thing in the lamp to fully cure. After all of the bees have been fully cured and attached, take a brighter shade of yellow paint and highlight their bodies with a little bit of a kind of splotchy striping down the center. doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, keep it a little bit rough looking. After that's been done, then you're going to switch to your black paint and add some stripes along their abdomen. After they have their abdomens all stripied, which doesn't take too long, but you do want to be careful that you don't get any of that black paint where it doesn't belong. So just take your time and actually get them nice and striped. Then you're going to take some white paint and add just a touch of a line on their eyes as a reflection or on their head as a reflection off of their eyes. So just add those couple little white dots. Now dip your wing into the jewelry gel and then hold it in place and flash cure it on the bumblebee. This doesn't take long. This flash cures really, really quick and then you can just let go, but you need to be gentle with them and make sure that you do not bump them until they are fully cured. Once they're fully cured, they're actually quite strong and you don't have to worry about it too much, but just make sure all of your bumblebees have wings and then highlight those wings with some diluted white paint just a little couple lines on the top of each wing and then once that has been done so all of your bumblebees have stripes they have eyes they have wings their wings have some color to them you can apply a matte top coat to anything that doesn't need to be shiny so basically just your bumblebees and then you're going to want to apply some gel top coat to basically everything else so gel or gel sealer gel sealer or, or gel top coat they're very close to the same thing but you're just going to apply that really shiny glossy gel product over the jar over the honey and the honey is touching almost everything so you're going to do that over the honey dipper where there's the honey touching it over the nail where there's honey on the nail over the honeycomb just make sure all of that looks really shiny if you run into areas that you can't accurately apply the gel top coat to with just the bottle brush you're going to put some on a a little palette and then use a small nail art brush to apply it to any of those places just to make sure you don't get it where you don't want it after everything has been top coated and everything has been finished off, the last thing you can do is you can add a little bit of a 3D depth to the drips on the jar so they really stand out with some either a 3D gel that has um, like a crystal gel or a jewelry gel or something that has that height to it. There's a bunch of different names for it. The one that I'm using currently, that's from Red Iguana and it is called Crystal Gel. So then you just apply that, add some height to it, cure it one last time and this nail is done. I love how um, just it just looks so elegant to me, even though it's crazy and over the top and obviously not wearable, but just the gold tones and the bumblebees, I really do adore it. I hope you guys like it as much as I do, and I will see you all next time. Bye.